Okay, yay. So this is the test three review. Again, five problems on the review, five problems on the test. Of course, they're gonna have different numbers, right? Different initial values, but the same type of problem you're gonna have. It's not gonna be the same function, right? It's gonna be a little bit different. But the idea is, is you are gonna have to use the definition of a Laplace, okay? So when you're doing the definition of Laplace, the Laplace of any function should be the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative st times that function dt. It's recording. Here we go. So we're going to have um, e to the negative st and then t minus 1 e to the negative t because that's my function, right? So then I'm gonna put the e's together, and when you multiply terms with the same base, what do you do with the exponents? You add them. So this will be e to the negative st plus a negative t is just minus t, right? And so then anytime you have x's or t's, whatever, but the variables, even if it was t squared or t cubed or anything like that, okay? If you have that letter in front of your e, you can just do your tabular method for by parts, okay? It'll always work. So I'm going to just jump into tabular method because this minus 1 really isn't going to affect too much, okay? So I'm going to start with t minus 1 on this side. What is the derivative of t minus 1? Just 1. What's the derivative of the one? Zero. Zero. So the only part I have is the derivative of t, right? Which is one. What's the derivative of one? Zero. Zero. So that's not too bad to multiply by, okay? Now for the, the dv's, we have this. If it helps, rewrite it as negative s minus 1 to the t, right? I basically just factored out the t, okay? But that helps so that when you're doing the derivative of the exponent, you can see what it is, right? So when I do the integral of this, I get the same exact exponent, but then I get 1 over the derivative of that exponent. And the derivative of that exponent, because it's just t, is just going to be the coefficient. And this is my coefficient there, isn't it? And if I do the integral again, again, I'm still going to have this e here, and I'm going to get 1 over s to the negative 1, but I have this as a coefficient as well, don't I? So that what that means is I actually end up with two of them downstairs, which is why there's a square. Okay, so you have this, which is a constant multiplier, and then when you integrate this, you get this same thing again. So you've got that fraction times itself. And then we just have to remember our signs, right? Go downward, diagonal, and then remember to, that one's going to be positive, but this one you're going to have to change the sign, right? I don't need to go any further because zero is just going to make everybody zero, right? And you don't really use this term. It's just where we got the other stuff from, okay? So this integral is going to become t minus 1 times 1 over negative s minus 1 e to the negative s minus 1 t minus 1 over negative s minus 1 squared e to the negative s minus 1 t and I still have to evaluate it from zero to infinity. Kind of ran out of room there. So sorry it's so smushed. I was trying to find where the zoom is, but I don't see it. I think this one's the one where I just have to move it closer. There we go. Ah, 
Okay. I'm going to clean that up before before no it doesn't matter yes it does I'm gonna clean it up okay so this is gonna be t minus 1 at the bottom I'm gonna sub take out the negative and I'm gonna do the same thing to this I'm gonna take out the negative and the same thing here except I still have the square And I have not evaluated it yet. I'm just playing around with that denominator. The reason why I did this is because e to the infinity goes to infinity. But e to the negative infinity goes to zero. And it's a little bit clearer if you see that negative out there, right? So that's why I did it. Otherwise, you would have to know that this is going to be negative, right? Because s is between zero and infinity, right? So this is going to be negative. Okay, so then now we can do this. So if I plug in, I'm going to kind of box this because it's side work, right? If I plug in infinity here, I'm going to get infinity. Even if I minus 1, it's still infinity, right? And then I would have a negative infinity as my exponent. Minus... And here I would have a negative infinity. Now I'm going to plug in 0 for all the t's. So here I have 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. And 0 times anything is just 0. And same thing, when I plug in 0 for t, 0 times anything is just going to be 0. So remember, this goes to 0, right? It doesn't matter if that's infinity, because what happens when you multiply 0 times anything? Still zero. The whole thing's still going to be a big fat 0. And same thing here. This is 0, which means if I multiply it by this fraction, it's still going to be 0. But, there's a lot of negatives here. This negative needs to distribute. Now, how many negatives do I have there in that first fraction? If I distribute the negative outside, how many negatives are there total that I would have to multiply or divide? Three. Three. So the answer is going to be negative. negative. And this is just one, so I don't need to write it, right? E to the zero is just one. Now, over here... This is a trick question, because it's tr not trick question, but it's a tricky question. <laughs> How many negatives are there on the second term? Three. Nope. Four. Four. This square means there's two of these guys, right? So there's two of those guys, there's a third one, and then there's a fourth one, right? So what sign will I end up with after all of that? Positive. Positive. So I'll just have s plus 1 squared because I already considered that negative, right? And e to the 0 is just 1, so I don't need to write it down. 1 times that fraction is going to be that fraction, okay? Now you can stop here. This is fine. You could get a common denominator if you really wanted to, but this is fine, okay? You've Laplace didn't, you've done the definition and figured it all out. After you evaluate it, that's it, okay? I think another answer would have been negative s over s squared, s plus 1 squared. That would have been another version of the answer. Okay? You multiply this guy by s plus 1, the negative transfers and makes it a negative s, and then a negative 1, and the negative 1 and the positive 1 go away, right? So you just have negative s over s plus 1 squared. So either one of those is okay. To me, after I evaluated it, 
I would just stop. <laughs> just don't even go any further. Okay. Okay, so that's problem one. So with explaining it and everything, right? Showing you the formula chart after I pause the video, it took less than 12 minutes. Okay. So hopefully it takes you about 12 minutes to do that problem, right? Hopefully. Okay. Let's go to number two. So now we gotta go the reverse. I need to make sure, right? Even if you mess up the big the big ones, I need to make sure you, at least you could do the little pieces. Okay. So can you Laplace using the definition? Yes, done, right? Can you inverse Laplace? And there's no there's no uh, definition for that, right? It's just using the tables. So this is really just to practice with that Laplace um, transform. Honestly, this is just your problem that's going to have the partial fraction become. Okay. We may see it in the other problems. You may not see it on the test. Okay. You may or you may not. Can't promise you anything because there's a problem I haven't finished. I haven't decided on yet. <laughs> I had one in there and then I decided that's not a good one, but I don't know what I want to put in there instead. So I can't promise you that there's not going to be a partial fraction decomp with the DEs. But I know that this is definitely trying to make sure that you could do the partial fraction decomp, okay? I just have to hunt around for that last problem if I want to pick a good one. Um, okay, so we do want to do the Laplace transform, but we know that there's a formula with this denominator, right? And we know there's a formula with that denominator. But there's no formula that has both of them, okay? Which means we have to be able to rewrite this so that you have something over s squared plus 9 and you have something else over the s plus 4. Because if it's like this, then I can apply those individual transforms, right? So this is why we have that partial fraction decomp going on. So I'm going to end up with 5s equal to a times s plus 4 plus b times s squared plus 9. And then let me see what we end up with here. <laughs> yes, you are right. So I'm totally going to have to erase everything, right? <laughs> this is a quadratic, right? And we talked about when you have a quadratic, you should have what on top? A linear, right? One degree less on top, always. This is a linear, which means that the top should be constant, right? You know when I did the review by myself yesterday and I did the exact same thing and then caught it like halfway in. <laughs> and the reason why I caught it was because when you try to do this, you get no solution. And so then I was like, oh, something's wrong. <laughs> and so I went back over here. But yes, this should be A, S plus B. And then this one should be C. Okay, so you have your linear part and then you have your constant part. So that's going to change this up. So I'm just going to erase... And I did go through the whole thing. I went through the whole thing and then realized everything was zero. And I was like, no, this is not, definitely not correct. <laughs> so AS plus B times S plus four. And then C times S squared plus nine. There we go. So we get AS squared, four AS, BS. 4B, yes sir. And where am I? Okay, so that and that, that and that. These guys, okay, that one's done. And then CS squared and 9C. So, on the left side of the equation. What is the coefficient of s squared? Zero, because there is no s squared over here. But on the right hand side, I have a s squared and I have positive c s squared, right? Now on the left hand side, what is the coefficient of s? Five. And over here, my coefficients for s are 4a 
and b. Again, on the left side, what is the constant? Zero, because there's no constant. And on the right-hand side, I have 4b plus 9c. So they all have a different pair of variables, right? So I am going to need to put two of them together and make sure I eliminate the correct variable so that I end up with the same variables as the third, okay? I would rather use this one to eliminate because I can multiply it by whatever, right? And it's not going to affect the other one. So what do you want to eliminate? Everybody's positive, so you're going to have to multiply somebody by a negative. Um, do you want to just go for the top two? Okay, if I'm going for the top two, who do I have to eliminate so they end up with B's and C's? I have to eliminate the A, which means I need to multiply the top one by what? Negative four. So then I get negative, oh, not negative four, equal. I get zero still equal to negative four A, negative four C. And then the bottom one, I'm going to put it right underneath. So this becomes 5, those wipe out, and B minus 4C. So now looking at my new equation and the other BC equation, which one would be easier to eliminate, B or C? B. And what do I need to multiply the b by to eliminate it with the other one? Mm -hmm. I can multiply this equation by negative 4. When I do that, I get negative 20, negative 4b, and positive 16c. Does that look right? So when I combine, I get negative 20 equal to 25c. And if I divide by 25 and I reduce, what do you end up with? Mm -hmm. And then I, oh, and then if I look at the top equation, right, what would A have to be then? Positive 4 fifths. Positive 4 fifths. And then I think the easiest one to use is the second one to find B. So I'm going to say 5 equals 4 times 4 fifths plus b. So 5 minus 16 fifths is b. Well, 5 is 25 fifths, right? What's 25 fifths minus 16 fifths? 9 fifths. I mean, you can use your calculator if you want to. I'm not. I didn't bring it, so I'm having to do it all right. It's not too bad, though. Okay, so now I know what my function should look like. I know it should have a 4 fifths s plus 9 fifths over s squared plus 9 plus, actually not plus, right? C is what? C is negative, so this actually will end up being a minus 4 fifths over s plus 4. So I do see the s squared plus 9 downstairs, but if you look at all your transform formulas, none of those formulas with the s squared plus a number squared have two terms in the numerator, right? They all only have one term in the numerator. So we need to fix this and separate that fraction, okay? And while I separate it, I'm going to take these numbers and put them in front, okay? So I'm not putting in the inverse yet. I'm just going to manipulate this. So this term is going to be s over s squared plus 9. Then this is going to be 9 fifths times 1 over s squared plus 9. And then this third term is going to be 4 fifths times 1 over s plus 4. Okay. We've almost got it to the transform. Okay. I don't even need to put the little L squiggly thing if I don't need to, okay? I don't have to. Just as long as when you do the squiggly thing, this is going to turn into a function of T, isn't it? Okay? You just need to remember that. 
and then you can just Laplace transform everything, okay? Now, this one's good to go. I'm gonna have four fifths cosine of what? Yes, that is three squared, so three T. However, if I just have a constant upstairs, it should be a particular constant, right? Whatever's being squared here should be what I have in the numerator before I can uh, inverse transform. So what should I have in the numerator? What number should be there? What number is this squared? This is three squared, which means I should have a three up here. Now if I put a three up there, I would have to put a three down here to undo it, right? Now what that means is that this fraction will become sine of 3t, but before I write the coefficient, I'm going to reduce it. Now that there's a 3 downstairs in red, that's going to reduce with a 9, isn't it? So I'm going to end up with 3 fifths. Another way you could have done it besides putting the 3 on top and the 3 on bottom is to split the 9. I could have split the 9 and put a 3 here and a 3 there when I multiply, isn't that 9? Right? So that still would have been equivalent to the previous line. Okay. So whichever way you do it. I just always put the 3 on top and the 3 on bottom because I don't even have to think about if that number breaks up nicely or not. I just do it and it, it'll reduce if it reduces. Okay. Over here, we have to be careful. This should have been, if you really wanted to look exactly like the formulas, it should be minus a negative 4, right? And then that becomes e to what power? Negative 4t. And now I'm done. I have Laplace inverse everything, and that's the final answer. So you will have one of those. Oh, you're right. My line and my right here is wrong, right? Yes. So we had a minus there. So then this should have been a minus, which then means our final answer should be a minus, right? is why I believe in partial credit because <laughs> this happens <laughs> some people don't believe in partial credit and I'm like how do you live like that <laughs> I couldn't do that nothing is perfect I mean if it is yay you but <laughs> but it's not always perfect so yes we need partial credit okay so that's Two problems we know we're going to have, right? We know we're going to have the Laplace transform, and we know we're going to have the inverse Laplace transform. You're doing it a bunch. It's just those are the more complicated ones, okay? And so those are their own problems, okay? When it comes to solving the DEs, the laplace and the inverse laplace is not that difficult, okay? So that's why those have their own special problems. The rest of the problems are going to be two, two DEs, and then a system of DEs. That's, that's the end of it, okay? So you are going to have two different DEs to solve, and then you're going to have a system, okay? And I don't think, yeah, the difference is, is this DE has one prime, right? And this DE has how many primes? Two primes, okay? So that's what you can expect. You can expect one DE with a single prime, one DE with a double prime, and then you'll have a system. And the systems are not going to have double primes. Okay, they're the simpler ones, the ones with just one prime. Okay, and when you have zero over here, the Laplacing and all that's a little bit nicer. Okay, so let's see this one, number three. It wants us to solve the initial value problem, so we're going to Laplace every single term. So when I Laplace y prime, I have to use that definition. I'm going to get s Laplace of y, a constant one, and then y of zero. 
that's for y prime. Minus, what do I get when I Laplace y by itself? It's just L of y, right? You can't do anything but write that, okay? Now, when I Laplace the t, remember what you get. You get 1 prime over s to the 1 plus 1. And what is y of 0? Yes, this guy is just 0. So I don't even really have that term. So I have s, l of y, minus l of y, equal to 2 over s squared. That's what we've got. Also, you are going to have to do partial fraction of decomp. Sorry. <laughs> this is a baby one. It's not bad. Not with the s squared stuff. So then here we get, we have to get the Laplace of y by itself. So if I factor out the Laplace of y, what would go in the parentheses? You've got two terms, so two things need to go in that parentheses. Mm -hmm. Which means the s minus one is gonna have to go downstairs on the other side, right? Now, this is a good problem to be in here so that you have all the different cases. You have choices on how you want to do it when you just have s with a square. You can treat it as a quadratic, which I think is the easiest way to do it, or you can treat it as a linear factor with an exponent, okay? So when you have a linear factor with an exponent, what you're supposed to do is it's supposed to turn into a constant over that factor plus another constant over the next power of that factor plus a constant over a more an increased factor until you get to the exponent you have. Since I only have squared, right, it would just be these two, wouldn't it? But if I were to get a common denominator here, wouldn't I have to multiply that by s and s? And isn't it the same thing as doing as plus b over s squared, right? So that's what I mean. With with the repeated linear, you could just do, since it's just s, you could just treat it like it's a, a quadratic, okay? So when I set up my um, thingamabob here, I'm going to do just that. So I'm going to have 2 equal to as plus b, and I'm also going to have another one over here, right, for the minus 1? So I'm going to have to do as plus b times s minus 1. And then I'm going to have to do c times s squared so that I can figure out my, my fraction. Okay. So let's see. That is as squared minus as plus bs minus b plus cs squared. The highest exponent on the right hand side is s squared. What is the coefficient of s squared on the left side? Zero. And then I have a for that coefficient and c. What is the coefficient for s on the left hand side? Zero again, because there is none, right? Minus a plus b. And then finally I get my constant, which is two equal to the constant on the other side, which is negative b. Well, that's nice. I already have one, right? So b is what? Negative 2, which means then I also have a, because isn't a equal to b? Right? If I move the a over, it becomes positive. So I have a equal to b, which means that a is also negative 2. And then if a is negative 2, what does c have to be in order to get 0? positive 2. So I already have all of them. I don't have to do any eliminating or anything like that. Just substituting, right? 
So then we get L of Y equal to negative 2S minus 2 over S squared and positive 2 over S minus 1. So let's separate that fraction. I'm going to say negative 2 times 1 over S negative 2 times 1 over s squared and 2 times 1 over s minus 1. Do you see where I got 1 over s from? Write the s over the s squared, reduce. Okay, good. And then now we have, oh, we're missing something here. This is like 1 plus 1, right? So I only need a 1 factorial but that's already there, right? One factorial is one, and that's exactly what I had upstairs. So I don't need to put anything downstairs. If you do, it doesn't make a darn difference because it's still going to be a two in the end, okay? So when I do my inverse, this is going to be negative two times a constant one. What is negative two times a constant one? Just negative two, right? This is going to be negative two times t to the first power. And this is going to be 2 e to the what? Uh -huh. Positive 1t, right? Which is just t. Okay, so that's that one. Even though it had partial fraction decomp, it wasn't too, too awful. Now let's do our double prime, right? And this isn't going to go away either, right? Because they're not zeros. So those little terms are not going to go away. <laughs> We're going to have some stuff there. So let's see here. If I do the Laplace of every term, Laplace of this term is going to be s squared L of y minus s y of 0 minus y prime of 0. That's y double prime. Minus the derivative or the derivative. The Laplace of the first derivative is going to be s Laplace of y minus y of 0. Minus 2 and then just the Laplace of y. And what is the Laplace of 0? Mm -hmm. Laplace of 0 is always just 0, right? If you stick it inside that integral, it's going to be the integral of 0, which is 0. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. So let's see what we have here. This is going to be what number? Y of 0 is what number? Negative 2. So what's negative s times negative 2? Positive 2s. And then what is y prime of 0? 5. But a negative times a positive is going to stay negative, right? Now let's be careful here because this minus is going to distribute. Okay? So that's going to be a minus s Laplace of y. This guy here is what? y of 0 is negative 2. So you've got a negative times a negative, which is what? Positive, right? But then times this negative 2. So that makes it negative in the end. So be very careful with your signs on that one. That one's a little bit tricky. And so just like before, we want to get our Laplace of y by itself and everything else on the other side. I'm going to do both steps in one, okay, just to save paper, right? So if I take the Laplace of y out from all the terms that have a Laplace of y, 
you should end up with just their coefficients inside the parentheses, right? So I should end up with s squared minus s minus 2. These other terms that don't have a Laplace of y need to go to the other side. So this is going to become negative 2s, positive 5, and positive 2. So I'm just moving the terms that don't have an L of y over to the other side. So then if I get the L of y all by itself, that means that this goes downstairs. And if I combine that, I get 7. Oh, are you going to have to do partial fraction decomp? Okay, let's see. This is s minus 2, s plus 1. Does that look right? Is that a factor, right? So we will have to do partial fraction decomp. Bum, bum, bum. So let's see. Might not be too bad. Negative 2, s plus 7 is going to be a times s plus 1 plus b times s minus 2. That means that a should be going over the s minus 2, right? And then b should be going over the s plus 1. So make sure you get those straight when you do it later, right? Because you don't want to put the wrong number on top of the wrong denominator, okay? So if you multiplied a times the s plus 1, it's because the s minus 2 canceled from that fraction, okay? Now let's see what we get when we set this up. So I get negative 2 for s and a plus b and 7 for y or for the constant and a minus 2b. I'm going to go ahead and multiply the top equation by 2. So I get negative 4, 2a and 2b which means I get 3 equals to 3a. So what does a equal? Oh no, that's not going to be, yeah, yeah, that's right. a equals 1. Uh-huh, a equals 1. Then if I go back, if a is 1, that means b is what? Not negative 1. Negative 3. Negative 3 you have to minus that one over right so then I get L of Y equals 1 over s minus 2 minus 3 over s plus 1 I'm gonna manipulate it one last little bit and then we should be able to get to the answer So when I Laplace trans inverse Laplace, I'm going to get just y. What am I going to get for this first term? E to the 2t. E to the 2t. And what am I going to get for the second term? Minus. 3e to the negative 1t, or just negative t. Good. Well, if these have Laplace inverse, then I'm pretty sure at least one of them is going to have, or if these have partial fraction decomp, I'm sure at least one's going to have partial fraction decomp. But I can remember one of them didn't. So. At least one of them won't <laughs> require a partial fraction decomp.
Okay. So this one is number five. And it's the last one we've got to do. But this one's the system, right? I don't like it in this form. So I'm going to change it to x prime plus 3y and then 2x plus y prime and then that just is better for my eyes okay if it had the little d2 then that would be the double prime right but this one doesn't have double prime the system's not going to have double prime so let's do all of our Laplace so the Laplace of the derivative is s Laplace of x minus x of 0 plus 3 times the Laplace of y and the Laplace of 0 is just 0. So then x of 0 is actually 1, isn't it? So this is minus 1. And if I move the guy that doesn't have an L of X or L of Y to the other side, I end up with this as my first equation. Okay, so this is my first equation. This is the one I'm going to come back to later. Okay. Now I'm going to do all the same steps I just did, these last three steps. I'm going to do it again, but with the second equation, right? So now I'm going to start looking Laplace transforming this guy. So I get 2 times the Laplace of x plus s Laplace of y minus y of 0 and the Laplace of 0 is just 0. I'm going to plug in my number for y of 0 and it's just a 1. And then I'm going to move that one over because it doesn't have an L of X or L of Y next to it. And this is my equation too. So I'm going to have to come to these two equations two times. I'm going to have to look at these. Okay. Once when I eliminate one variable and then once when I eliminate the other variable. Okay. So looking at these, let's say I want to eliminate X first. Okay. Look at what's in front of x. These do not have anything in common at all, right? So I'm going to have to multiply this equation by a 2, and I'm going to have to multiply this equation by an s, so that they both have 2s in front, right? But one of them has to be negative. Just a word of advice, you don't have to do it my way, but I prefer to put the negative on the number and not the variable, okay? Because if you put it on the variable, later you're going to have to factor that negative out. And who knows if we'll even remember to do that later, right? So just put it on the number and it'll all work itself out, okay? So since I have to multiply this one by s, this is the one where I'm going to put the negative. I'm going to multiply this equation by a negative 2, okay? So when I do negative 2 times equation 1, I'm going to get negative 2s L of x and then negative 6 L of y and then equal to negative 2. When I do s times equation 2, I get 2s L of x plus s squared L of y equal to s. Okay? So then these will wipe out and I'll end up with s squared minus 6 times the L of Y and over here I have S minus 2. Now here I have L of Y equal to S minus 2 over S squared minus 6. Do I need a partial fraction decomp? You already have a linear on top of a, um, you only have one denominator first of all, right? So if you only have one denominator, that automatically should tell you you don't have to partial fraction decomp. It's only when you have two factors downstairs that you have to partial fraction. Another thing is I already have a linear on top of a square, don't I? So that's another indicator, okay? 
So just leave it alone. The only thing is, is that all of our transforms with the squares don't have two terms on top, right? They just have one term on top. So we do have to separate it. So I'm gonna have to have s over s squared minus six, and then I'm gonna have to have minus two times one over s squared minus six. Now I'm gonna write it a little bit different before I actually transform, because I'm almost done with this one. Okay, when you're using the formulas, isn't it some number squared with the s squared, right? Now, whatever that number is here, if all you have is a constant on top, you have to have that constant on top, right? So if I put that constant on top, that means I'm gonna have to take it out at the same time so that that fraction is equivalent to the previous fraction, okay? Now, when I Laplace inverse everything, this will become y, this will become, careful, what will it become? Not inverse. Uh huh. The hyperbolic cosine, right? Cosh. <laughs> so it's going to be this one. When it's a minus, be careful. We hadn't seen that in any of our examples. But we have to remember when it's a minus. And I put those on that formula. So be careful. Pay attention to whether it's s squared plus or s squared minus. Okay? And then over here, we just have 2 squared is 6, and this one's already good to go, but it has a minus, so it's hyperbolic sine squared is 6t, okay? And just that, just a FYI, pet peeve of mine, make sure your bar on the square root stops where it's supposed to stop. Do not put the t inside that square root, okay? It's just that number times t. But we got half the problem done. We know what y is. Hopefully that same kind of thing. I don't have to do partial fraction decomp. Hopefully that happens when I go to the other side, right? Because now we've got to go back to our equations over here. And now we eliminated x. So now we need to focus on eliminating y. Okay? So looking at these two equations, here's the L of y and here's the L of y. We're going to have to multiply equation 1 by an s. And then we're going to have to multiply equation 2 by a 3. But they're both positive, which means I'm going to have to actually use a negative 3 for equation 2. So if I multiply this guy by an s, I'm going to get s squared L of x plus 3s L of y equal to s. If I multiply this equation by negative 3, I end up with negative 6 L of x, negative 3s L of y, and then negative 6. So when I combine these guys, I'm going to end up with s squared minus 6 L of x. These will wipe each other out. Now be careful, it's not a 5, it's an s, right? So you still have s minus 6. So I have s minus 6 over s squared minus 6. And you're just basically following the same steps. You just have a different number here, don't you? It's literally the same thing. I could even just use this information to jump straight to the answer. Because instead of a 2 here, I have a 6, right? Which means instead of a 2 there, I should have a 6, right? Which means instead of a 2 there, I should have a 6, right? <laughs> so we already know what the answer is going to be. It's just not y, it's x equals. And then 6 over the square root of 6. I never repeat stuff if I don't have to. If I've already got it and it's already right there where my teacher can see, <laughs> they should know. I'm just, look at all those steps. It's the same thing. I already know. Yes? Should it be a negative 6? Do we multiply the negative 3? Should it be multiplied by a positive? Ah, good point. 
We multiplied this guy by a negative 3, didn't we? So should it be negative 6? No, what should it be? Negative 3. Good catch. So the 6 is still at the bottom, it's just at the top, right? But the same thing as before. It was a 2, now it's a 3. Everything else is exactly the same, right? So that would be a 3, this would be a 3, which means at the end I would have a 3, right? So this needs to be a 3. Thank you. So you have your transform formulas. You're not going to have to memorize those. You have the transform of a derivative formula, although it's the generic one. It's not the specific one for one single prime or one single double prime. But if you've seen it enough and you have it memorized, that's fine. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. And then you will have this kind of format. So you're going to have one Laplace with using the definition, the integral. One Laplace transform, which will require partial fraction decomp. It'll be the worst partial fraction decomp of the test, right? You're going to have a problem, a regular DE with a single prime. Then you're going to have a regular DE with a double prime. And then you're going to have a system with a single prime. Okay? So that's the outline of the test. And I know for a fact that at least one, maybe two of them... Um, don't require partial fraction decomp, but I have to double check. And then there's another one that I'm still waiting to pick. I looked at it. I looked at my old version of the test, and I was like, no, 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 no. That problem is way too much. So I'm taking it out, <laughs> and I'm going to put something else in there. I didn't realize I was so hard on them last semester. They have got A's and B's, so it couldn't have been that bad. <laughs> Maybe they're just super sharp. <laughs> With that. Does anybody have any questions? No? Don't eat too much candy today. I'm going to stop the video.